And in other words, we don't use authority he has given to us because we're using the name of Jesus and standing in the name of Jesus. And also there is this. There is only one stream of water in the well. There's not a stream in the well of salvation that is different from what is in the well. And the well of salvation was never under the old covenant. There was no well of salvation there because Jesus Christ is the well of salvation. It was prophesied, Isaiah even said, therefore with joy will I draw water out of the well of salvation, Isaiah 12, 3. And Jesus clearly demonstrated in Matthew 12 that he himself was the well, was the well of salvation, that he had the water alone that was quenched the thirst of mankind. <coughs> there was no well here until Jesus Christ came. That well was not under the old covenant. That well was never in existence during the whole period that the whole Old Testament was written. That well came into existence with Jesus Christ, the only Messiah. When he came and was born in this world, Emmanuel, God with us. You shall call his name Jesus in the Greek. It is Aedoasis. But in English, it is Jesus. It is no other name. There is no other name than Jesus whereby you can be saved. No other name. If you're using any other name to get saved, you are not saved. You will never make heaven. If you are following any other gospel, you will not make heaven. If you are keeping the feasts of that Israel of Moses' day, you will not make heaven. If you keep the feast of Passover, you will never enter heaven. Because Jesus Christ, our Passover, was slain for us. Jesus Christ is our Passover. So why are you going back to keeping that Passover that Moses instituted only for the children of Israel of the Old Testament? Then it ceased. No more Passover to be undertaken. Jesus and his disciples had the last Passover. And after that, he himself was the Passover. We do not partake of the table of a Passover of the Old Testament. We partake of the table of the Lord, who is the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, if we do those things, we are in the position, as it says in Galatians 4, of having fallen out of Christ. If you do any of those things and were once a Christian, even if you speak in tongues still, you have fallen out of Christ. And in this incident in Matthew 12, he says, it is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit that will never be forgiven. Neither in this age or the age to come. So if we say that we can defeat the strong man who has come against us by any power than either the power of the Holy Spirit. We are blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. Then he says, you pack of snakes. He was talking to the Pharisees and their followers. Now on one occasion in John, he said, John 8, he said, you are a den of snakes. You are a den of vipers. You are of your father, the devil. He said, 
you do the works of the devil. He was a liar from the beginning, and so are you, you pack of snakes. And of course, they wanted a sign, but they did not get one. So what do we do when we have this opposition in our midst? First of all, what did Jesus say in Matthew 28, verse 19 and 18? All authority has been given to me in heaven and upon the earth. All authority. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Son of Man and Son of God, is the only one in heaven and upon earth to whom all authority has been given. So we better listen to what he says. And he said to go and make disciples of all the nations. Now he was the son of David. His lineage through Mary went back to David. His lineage through Joseph did not go back to David because Jesus had no human father. He's the only begotten of the Father. He's God manifest in the flesh. And so we look to this one alone. And what did he say? Make disciples of all nations. What was the promise given to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12. It was given to Je Abraham. It was not given to Jacob. It was not given to Isaac. It was not given to the children of Israel. It was given to Abraham. In your seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Now we know that that seed is Jesus Christ, according to Galatians 3. But we also know that he, his descent was indeed through Isaac and Jacob, not through Esau, not through Ishmael. And Jesus was thinking, I am sure, of that promise to Abraham. He became interested immediately in making disciples of all the nations because he himself had gone to the lost sheep of Israel. But then others would go to the lost sheep of Israel in fulfillment of Daniel chapter 9, verses 24 to 27, when for a period they would be evangelized. And it turned out to be three and a half years from the time that Jesus was cut off and then it finishes in Acts chapter 10. So for three and a half years, the gospel indeed did go out to the lost sheep of Israel because Jesus was ministering there before he went to the cross for three years. And then after he ascended to heaven. His disciples went to the last sheep of Israel until the time of the Gentiles began in Acts chapter 10 when the first Gentiles in the house of Cornelius, the Roman centurion, heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. So Jesus has all authority. What does he say? in Matthew chapter 16, verse 15, go into the whole world and proclaim the good news or the gospel to the whole creation, Jew and Gentile. The good news is for the whole creation. There is no indication by Jesus that he singled out any race of any description. And this is what he said. 
Miraculous signs will follow those who believe. In my name. And that means invoking the name of Jesus, that is, using his authority. We do not have authority. There has been teaching around the charismatics in English speaking countries that we have the authority. They got that from Kenyon, who was a Baptist minister who received his theological education in a Christian science seminary. He has propounded that idea, which the charismatics have taken up. All authority is in the hands of Jesus Christ. But we invoke the name of Jesus, and in other words, we don't use authority he has given to us, because we're using the name of Jesus and standing in the name of Jesus. We are using his authority. And because of that, miraculous signs will follow those who believe. And the miraculous signs are done by the gifts of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. In my name, they will throw out evil spirits. They will speak in new supernaturally given languages and so forth. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. The power of the Holy Spirit is used for the, through the gifts of the Spirit, particularly the, the gifts of healing and miracles. We do not get the power to heal through the baptism with the Holy Spirit. The power of the baptism with the Holy Spirit is in speaking in other tongues. That's the dunamis, which means power to do a miracle and the miracle itself. But if we are filled with the Holy Spirit speaking in other tongues, we can do these miracles. We can cast out demons. And it's demons who have been attacking us and you. It's the demons of occultism. It's the demons of witchcraft as is spoken about in Galatians 3, where Paul said to the people, who has bewitched you? Because they were accepting Judaism. If we accept Judaism in any form, we have been bewitched by the Judaists. And that has come to the whole church of Jesus Christ. You don't think it would happen? It has happened. It is occurring because Jesus said that he will build his church, he told Peter, but he also said that my church is at the gates of hell because he then said the gates of hell will not prevail against it. We're at the gates of hell. We're at the gates where the demons come from. The demons are in the atmosphere. They are attacking the church of Jesus Christ in the millions of cases. And he attacks you and me through demons. So how do we get rid of this satanic opposition that comes into our lives and into our churches? We throw out the demons in the authority of Jesus. And then we turn to 1 Peter 4, verses 12 to 14. 1 Peter chapter 4, it says this, in verse 12, you're going through a fiery ordeal, you're being harassed. And of course, they were being harassed by people who were filled with demons, persecution they were experiencing. And they, he said, if you're insulted for the name of Jesus, be happy, because the glorious spirit, the spirit of God, 
rest upon you. If you suffer as a Christian, Christ's ones. We are suffering as Christ's ones. This persecution that has come upon the church, that has laid hold of almost 98%, I would say, of those who really have either known Jesus Christ or think they still know him or do know him or say they know him and they don't. If you suffer as a Christian, praise God that you bear the name of Christian. You bear the anointed one's name. He's anointed. We bear his name. Whatsoever you ask in my name, said Jesus. We bear his name. He's the anointed one. And he anoints us. And in 2 Peter chapter 5, we look at this. Verse 8. Your defendant opposition slanderer, liar, it says in this translation, walks around like a roaring lion, searching for someone to gulp down. That's Satan. He walks around the world looking to see if he can gulp you down. Well, in relation to this doctrine of Judaism, he has succeeded in gulping down I would say 97 or 98 percent of Christians, real Christians I'm talking about, in the West, particularly in the English-speaking countries. That's where it's sourced. That's where it arose. In, the, in those countries, in Britain, in USA, and in the English-speaking countries, of the empire of the, Brit of the British and particularly also in those countries where English is taught but where the English missionaries went. Those people have been engulfed in this satanic onslaught. But this is what Peter said you should do. Take up your stand in opposition against him, the devil. Be stubborn. It really is a, a Greek word that has a very strong meaning. Meaning, get stubborn. Be solid. Be harsh with your faith. Don't soften. Don't take pity on yourself. Get strong in faith. Use your faith stubbornly, even if nothing seems to break. Keep on. Keep on casting out the demons. Keep on pulling down the strongholds of Satan. Keep, out throwing, keep on throwing out the strong man who has come into your house of Christianity. But particularly, and I want to emphasize this, it is a personal matter. I don't think the church will ever lose its Judaism. It's had Judaism from the time the gospel began to be preached and it has worsened over the centuries. For the first uh, 60 years of the preaching of the gospel, while the apostles still lived, Judaism was kept at bay to a large extent although we find it in the epistles. But after they died, Judaism began to engulf the ecclesia, the church that called itself church, the church that was Christendom, all the Orthodox churches, the Roman Catholic Church in particular, and also the Protestant churches, the Charismatic churches, the Pentecostal churches, the Reformed churches, the Lutheran church, every church. Greatly attacked by Judaism. And most people don't know it's happened. 
it's happened. And we have to cast those demons out of our lives personally before we can do anything else to help anybody else. Because there, it is also a personal attack against us. We've had to work our way through it. We've had to get revelations of the Holy Spirit. We've had to seek the Word. We've had to look at history. We've had to know what's going on. And that takes time. But we come to you having spent that time, having taken years to throw off the yoke of thraldom. That was never really much of a thraldom because our eyes were on the coming of the Lord Jesus for his saints, even though we kind of believed these end time things, but not strongly like what's going on today. And Peter finishes up like this. The anointed one, Jesus Christ, will completely equip you after you have suffered briefly. He will stabilize you, strengthen you, and establish you. To him be the mighty sovereignty forever. To Jesus, not to Judaism, not to Israel, not to our denominational churches, not to Roman Catholicism, not to the Orthodox churches. To Jesus Christ, be the mighty sovereignty forever. Amen. Insulted for the name of Jesus, be happy. Because the glorious Spirit, the Spirit of God, rests upon you.